to you all um, uh, again. So uh, I wanted to just provide a little bit of context uh, around, uh, in particular, capital gains uh, taxes. Um, and we'll provide just a little bit of context and then happy to take a couple of questions. So as you know, and as uh, Jen has uh, spoken about, the president uh, is excited to this week um, lay out his plan to invest in American families. Um, it will be a plan that will provide critical support for children and families, and in, by doing so, critical support for our economy uh, by boosting labor force participation and future economic competitiveness, making among the most cost-effective measures to boost our long-term economic strength uh, that we know of. Um, and the president will also outline ways to offset the long-term costs of those investments by making reforms to our tax code that reward work and not just wealth. And one element of this reform uh, will be to change how we tax capital gains. Uh, and as you all know, that's income from selling stocks and other assets uh, for taxpayers that make more than $1 million per year um, in income. So I want to start by reinforcing who this change will actually affect. Um, this change will affect taxpayers making more than $1 million a year. Uh, in 2018, three-tenths of 1% of tax filers made more than a million dollars a year. So I want to start by underscoring this in simple terms. This change will only apply to three-tenths of a percent of taxpayers, um, which is not the top 1%. Uh, it's not even the top one half of 1%. Uh, we're talking about three-tenths of a percent. That's about 500,000 households uh, in the country that we're talking about. So for the other 997 out of 1,000 households in the country, uh, or the other 150 million uh, households in the country, this is not a change that will be relevant. It won't change their, uh, the tax treatment of capital gains at all. Um, and this makes sense because for the typical Americans, most of their income comes from wages. So for people making less than, uh, less than a million dollars a year, about 70% of their income comes from wages. Uh, but for those making more than a million, for the top three-tenths of a percent, it's the opposite. About 30% of their wages come from uh, uh, wages. Um, and that's probably actually an understatement, since the wealthiest can often strategically avoid reporting this type of income uh, entirely. And so as a result, this is, this is the provision that since 2000, if you look at the 1,400 tax filers, um, those are people making over $60 million a year. That's the, uh, for those of you keeping track, that's the top 1,000th of 1%. Um, they have only paid about 20% of their reported income in taxes. So their tax rate, um, which probably is overstated, again, because this is the category that um, often um, doesn't report or under-reports income their tax rate is lower than many middle-class families' tax rate. Uh, this is the dynamic that led Warren Buffett uh, to famously explain that he paid a lower tax rate than his secretary. Um, and it's the, uh, it is the dynamic that has led the president and others to argue that we need to do something about equalizing the taxation of work uh, and wealth uh, in this country. Uh, and that's why the reforms that the president will lay out are focused on this top sliver of people um, and treating capital gains the same as wages for that top three-tenths of a percent. Um, and we believe that it's not only fair, but it would also help to reduce the kinds of tax avoidance um, that significantly under, under, um, undermines trust and fairness in the tax code um, itself. Uh, and importantly, the, the revenue from this provision would, invest, would help invest directly in our kids uh, and our families and our future economic competitiveness and put us in a position where we can drive greater economic growth. Um, so we'll, we'll have more to say on this and how it fits into the overall plan, um, but I, I just wanted to uh, re-underscore at the top that, that number one, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, a, a tax change that would affect, again, the three-tenths of 1%, uh, the uh, top sliver of households. Um, and number two, the principle here is to equalize the treatment of, of ordinary income and capital gains. Um, and that is a principle that's neither 
um, new nor particularly novel. In fact, uh, the, uh, the last president to enact a uh, reform to equalize the treatment of uh, ordinary income and capital gains was President Reagan, uh, who uh, did so while raising capital gains taxes as part of the 1986 tax reform. Um, and of course, we will be uh, raising to, uh, higher rates than in that reform. Uh, but a lot has changed in the economy uh, since then. A lot has changed in the academic and empirical research uh, in this space. Uh, but the, uh, the principle is the same, which is that for the very uh, highest income Americans, we should tax at the same rate ordinary income and capital gains. So with that, when I pause and could take a couple of questions. Josh, 